And so it's time for a short custom example. And even though that project has happened many years ago, it shows us a good example how you can use DataGuard as a migration vehicle. So the customer here is Payback. And Payback belongs to American Express for a long while. They had quality in Munich. And they run the largest customer loyalty program in the world with a card. So you buy something in a store which participates in a payback program and you get points which you can redeem later on for cashback or for other things. And you get vouchers and promotions and all that. And in exchange, you tell payback a lot about your, uh, your purchasing patterns. So that project was actually the second part of a project. The first one was a migration from HPUX to Exadata. And in the second phase, we got a new Exadata. So Payback was the second customer in Europe, which had an Exadata and this was a V1. And later on, they purchased an X22. So we got a two month project timeline to migrate a 14 terabyte database. Now you would say, oh, that's not a big deal. But at this point, it was quite of a deal because on the X22, it came with Oracle 11.203. And on the V1, there was 11.107. So we needed an example here. And we followed this from this My Oracle support node, hardware and Oracle migration using DataGuard. So we used ARM and Duplicate to create a physical standby database. Because the constraints here were, that we couldn't install 11107 software on the new Exadata. If you would have done so, we would have disconnected the storage cells right away. And upgrading on the current one, on the old one, was not an option either because in the old days, that was way too complicated. In addition, the customer decided, oh, we have a network bottleneck, so we need a special InfiniBand cable to connect the boxes together with different InfiniBand standards and plugs. So that cable got shipped from the US at this time, it wasn't on the Oracle price list. The idea was we restore a 14 terabyte database with Armin with the command duplicate for standby from active database. So in order to do that, the machines were cabled together with that special InfiniBand cable. And then we restore the database and let Armin do the work. So we experimented a bit, and it was clear that the best performance will be reached with 64 parallel ARM and channels allocated. And so we reached more than four terabyte per hour over this InfiniBand connection. And the ARM and restore of this 14 terabyte database took three hours. Now this runs online. Your production is still going on. So you have no interruption here. And then, Payback was also an active beta tester of the new parallel upgrade. Now you would say, parallel upgrade, that's not new, that's 12. Many, many years, almost a decade now. Yes, you're right, but we had some customers who used it already in 11.203. So we gave those customers a special version for 11.203 and Payback was one of them. So. Database upgrade, including everything, took 20 minutes for this 14 terabyte system with the new parallel upgrade, which was three times as fast as the regular upgrade had taken. So this was a big success. And they went live on 3rd of July, 2012, long time ago, and three weeks earlier than proposed. So we were faster in this project again. The total migration time reported was four hours. So three hours to restore the standby and for the recovery, then 20 minutes for the database upgrade and 40 minutes for extra tasks. But in fact, only one hour is downtime, whereas the three hours up front is not real downtime. The fear of the DBAs was only if they report that they did everything in one hour, that the next downtime window would have been much more tighter. So they went with four hours outage time, even though we had just one hour. And remarks here, yeah, we had a few plan changes, but we used AWR and we used especially SQL plan management to nail down statements. The physical standby as a migration vehicle was the key technology, and it allowed us several test runs, which is really important, and the copy time does not account for downtime. And you see already on the slide in the uh, left lower corner, 2020 or 2021, I would say, 
of course, payback has gone through a next exadata and another one. So today they are on 19.8.0, but we didn't have any bigger migrations. It's just the same technique. We do this when new exadata is coming, physical standby is migration vehicle, and that's it. <laughs>